the affirmation that we're using for today's message is, I am a channel for good. Simple one, uh, a very familiar one as well. The question this week is, how do I receive my good? How do you receive good? What's the affirmation? I am a channel for good. What's a channel? A channel is an open way, right? I, I am an open flowing, you know, a channel in the water goes through something. It, it, is, a, it is a way of, um, of operating and it's a way of getting into or through something and to allow something to flow. How many of you would like to have good in your life? Right? Everybody put your hand up, make me feel good. There you go. And all of us would like to have good in our lives and all of us do have good in our lives. Some of us think there's more or less, some of us measure it based upon this or that. But one of the things that we know about New Thought and about the teaching of the founders is that we are always and everywhere to draw upon the good, and that good is infinitely present. And Paul tells us in scripture that all things work together for what? Good. All things work together for good. And I think there's great insight in what he says there because it is consistent with that which the way shower and the master Jesus taught us, and that is that good is everywhere. Good is a part of the substance that we see that we don't see that we see that we don't see. Because in New Thought, one of the things that we are taught and one of the foundations of our faith is that there is so much that we don't see and that that which we don't see is often real and that which we do see is not. It is transient. And if you don't believe that, look in the mirror and see from year to year how you change and how the person changes. Look at all of the circumstances and situations of the world and how they change. And Mary Baker Eddy brought that wonderful teaching of seeing beyond appearances. There is a consistent belief that matter, that thing, that's this, all this out here that we see, this room, me, you, the chair you're sitting in, all of this matter, that it's not quite what we believe it is. It's not what we see with our human eyes and here with our human ears. And so when you look at a chair, you look at this stage, you look at it and it appears to be something, but it's quite something else. And what we know it is, is energy. What we know it is, is something other than what it appears to be. And this, this issue of substance that we've been talking about for a few months has to do with this big amount out here that surrounds us of infinite intelligence, of limitless possibilities, of all of the resources and things we need. We talk about the fact that everything that has been created in the physical sense is here and has been here. It's a matter of putting it together. And in the midst of all of that, in all this unseen, there is good. What's the question today? How do I receive my good? Well, first of all, you will receive your good and I will whether we like it or not. We may take a while to get good at it, but we will receive it. And we will become great receptors because what's the affirmation this morning? I am a channel for good. I'm a channel for good. So there's good flowing constantly around us. There's good flowing constantly within us. You know, the worst person in the universe has good flowing within them. Because you know, when they were a little baby, they were laying there, and what were they? Perfect love, perfect good. That's what they were. That's how they came. And then circumstance and situation presents itself and we become something completely different. Does that deny the fact that that's happened? No. Does it deny the consequences? No. But the reality is that that great good is still there. And that great good is in every single one of us because that great good is the creative substance or force through which God and infinite intelligence created everything. And so that good is everywhere. So how do we receive it? Well, we always, we, we receive it, but sometimes we don't know that we receive it. And we don't know it because we listen to what we hear and, we, and see with our human eyes and we respond on a human level. Now, so often we say, well, I, what, what can you expect? You know, I'm only human. You know, that's, a, that, that's not quite the truth. We say it, but it's not quite the truth. We're not only human, but you know, there's a good thing when we say only human, because humans have limitations. But we are not human beings, only we are spiritual beings. 
And we are not human beings, limited beings, that are having a spiritual experience once in a while so we feel really high up on the mountaintop and then all of a sudden it's not there anymore. We've become very human again. But if we can learn to be aware of the spiritual dynamic that dwells within us, then we can understand and realize that no matter what the limiting power of this human experience is, there is infinite power and possibility within us. There is infinite good. And that's why Paul says, all things are working together for good. It doesn't mean that every experience is good in its feeling, but it does mean that good is the constant reality that's working and operating within the circumstance situation. So how can I receive it? How can I receive it? It is accessible and available, but the switch has to be turned on. And how is the switch turned on? The switch is turned on by first and foremost believing what Paul said, that all things work together for the good. May not be able to see it, may not be able to know it at the present moment, but in our inner being within us, we know that it's going to work for good. That it's going to work for good. Think of your own life and the tragedies that you've had, everyone's had them, and the difficulties that you've had, and the horrible experiences that you've had. And out of those experiences, so many, many of them, if you really think about it, so many wonderful and good things came. So many wonderful and good things came. And the greatest and most wonderful thing that came from those experiences is that you went through the experience and you came out on the other side. And it showed you and taught you how powerful and how magnificent and how limitless you are in the face of every circumstance and situation, even the worst. So what happens then if we change our way of thinking about circumstance and situation and don't deny that these things happen and don't deny how we feel? We're not talking about that. Feel the way you feel, but in the midst of that place, know with an inner knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that all of this is operating within a reality of good. And if I can't see the good now, I'll see it one day. I'll hold tight to this problem. What if every time we had a difficulty or a problem, no matter how devastating, we would say to ourselves, I'm gonna hold on to this, I'm going to contemplate it, I'm going to pray about it, I'm going to reflect upon it, I'm going to be in the midst of where I am, and I'm going to see in the midst of this thing how I can have, claim, see, and be a channel for good in the midst of it. And when we begin that way of thinking, do you know what we've done? We've turned on the switch. And when we turn on the switch, this magnificent flow of good comes and flows between us. This magnificent assurance of love and light and the presence of God comes. And so when the doctor says what he says, or when the checkbook is empty, or when we're dealing with something horrific and terrible, as painful as it is, we're not, I'm not talking about not feeling it. I'm talking about feeling it and in the midst of feeling it, knowing some good is coming out of this and what I need to do is to know that it's there and to know that it's coming forth and to be able to deal with the present moment, however that present moment may be, however difficult that present moment may be, and to deal with it with the assurance and the knowledge that good is coming from this and that good is in the midst of it. We can see that there is good. We can see that there's the presence and power of God. We can see it and we can know it. Years ago, I spoke to a lady <clears throat> who had uh, lost her husband and her uh, uh, her mother and her, uh, she'd lost a lot of people in a very short period of time. She was so horribly depressed and everything was wrong and everything was bad. And for a season in her life, everything was because she was there in that valley, in that experience. That was the experience. And through that process, we kept talking and we kept praying and we kept reflecting and we kept working through it. And month after month after month went by. And months later, it took months, it was nearly a year. And she came to see me and she said, you'll never believe what happened. And I was in the shower and I was laughing out loud and she said, it just struck me. How can I be laughing with all that's happened to me and she said, I realized that the laughter that I heard was me. And she said, when I heard that laughter, 
I just laughed even more and laughed even more. And she said, I'm free now, I'm good, it's better. And during all those months she had laughed, but now she was able to embrace the reality of that laughter and joy. The laughter and joy was gone for a period of time, but it was there. And as soon as it bubbled up, there it was. And then to her way of thinking, she said, oh, who is that? Who could that be? And then she realized it was her. And she realized, I'm happy. And then she thought, how can I be happy? I've been miserable for months. And yet in her misery for months, she was happy. She just wasn't there yet. And so sometimes we go through that process. And that's a big one if you lose lots of people. Think. But the little ones, you know, the little ones when you don't have enough money, when somebody, you have a little fight with somebody, you have those things when you think that there's no good in this, there's no good. Or you look at the world and you say, there's no good in this. How can you look at the world and say, there's no good in this? How can you look at the world and say, it's so bad? Heaven's sakes, can you imagine taking a donkey or a horse from here to Los Angeles? And here we, you know, travel with such wonder and magnificence. It's, we are, our lives are filled with good. Our lives are filled with love and possibility. The good news is that good is ever present. The good news is that good can never depart from us. The good news is that Paul was right and Christ was right and you are right. And I am right and all of us are right when we know that good is always there. And that that good can come forth. And that we are channels of that good, not because we send it out, but because it is constantly flowing into us. And it is flowing into us from the love and the heart and the mind of God from the infinite intelligence of the Creator who is constantly, constantly flooding us with love and light and good. The well, question, how do I receive my good? We receive our good by being aware of its presence. That's all, being aware of its presence and then beginning the process of claiming it in the midst of every circumstance and situation. And if we claim it despite appearances to the contrary, that's the big challenge of our faith, to see beyond the appearance. Because the appearance is for the moment, but the truth is for eternity. So this week, go out, and when you fight with somebody, when you get mad at somebody, when you get depressed and angry, when you get down about circumstances, know that there's great good in this circumstance situation. Allow that channel to be open and allow that channel to flow into and through you until it just overflows completely and totally. And then wonderful, magnificent things will happen. Mm -hmm.